I'm Diego Sanchez, president of Housing Wire, and this is 10 Minute Talks. My guest today is Kristen Seifert, president of Finance of America. Kristen, welcome to 10 Minute Talks. Thanks, Diego. Happy to be here and congrats on your recent promotion as well. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for joining me today. Before we dive in, could you give a 60 second introduction of yourself and Finance of America? Yeah, so um, I've literally and figuratively grown up in this industry. I've been in this industry for over 20 years now in reverse mortgages specifically. I've been with this company since 2012. Um, I've been married to an amazing husband for the last 20 years. We have two sons, 10 and 7. So when I'm not working, I am immersed in all of their sports and activities. And um, really, you know, I think the things that I am most passionate about that show up at work are the opportunity to help people thrive in life. And so, you know, through what we do at work, there's two avenues for that. One is our borrowers, right? We have this really unique opportunity to help them in this third act of life, really do the things and live out the life that they may have thought could only be a dream, uh, bringing those things to reality. And then for the team at work, we spend so many of our waking hours at work. I really care deeply about creating a culture and an ecosystem where people feel like they have the opportunity to thrive and do things that they care about and are passionate about at work. So who is Finance of America? Uh, that's been an iterative story uh, over the last uh, many years, but um, you know, we went through a massive pivot uh, last year and um, we are solely focused today on really helping kind of the modern retiree reimagine what their retirement years could look like through the power of their home equity. So we think there's a really big opportunity for home equity being used to help fund retirements to be a mainstream concept. It already is in other countries. And so that's kind of our you know, reason for being is helping people in our country see the unique power home equity could provide for them. Let's unpack that a little bit. Uh, as you mentioned, you, you had some some big changes in 2023, um, you know, with the shift in the, in the business and then the purchase of AAG, which is a pretty big acquisition. What is the underlying strategy behind these big moves? I mean, you've mentioned home equity and reverse, um, but let's unpack it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think when we looked kind of at the the land the broader market landscape and the things kind of outside of our control the macro conditions at the time and then we looked internally at the different types of companies that we had in our enterprise um it was really very clear to the team that we had a uh an outsized opportunity to grow in the reverse industry right the the tailwinds as it relates to kind of the market dynamics, the demographics, and the fact that the industry really still hasn't scratched the surface on the opportunity was, you know, it's just, it's a really big and exciting thing that we all felt we could put all of our resources and energy behind and have a bigger opportunity to win in this area. It was also the area where we were the most evolved, right? We've been the lar largest wholesaler in our space for quite a while. Um, AAG is the largest retailer, you know, bringing these companies together um, really gave us a unique kind of foundation to do really big things in the future. So let's compare that to the opportunity in, in Ford mortgages. You know, why, you know, Ford mortgages are, 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 you know, it's a really difficult industry right now. And it has been for a year. There's a lot of competition. It's a hyper purchase market. Uh, mortgage rates are, have gone through the roof. What makes reverse different and more attractive to you as a leader? You know, I think, uh, again, for us, we just, as it related to the forward business, when you, we looked at the peers that we were competing against, there was a long way to go to bridge the gap from, in many different areas, right? Like even technology and the things that we would need to invest to kind of catch up to those peers. It was, it was just a sizable gap. Um, and we really you know, again, when we took a step back and we looked at kind of macro dynamics going on, the reverse industry was just a, a great place for us to focus all of our energy. Um, you know, with the AAG team, the, the legacy kind of far wholesale team. And then we have this um, 
really savvy capital markets engine as well that's really allowed us to be very innovative as it relates to bringing novel products to market. We can do those things in the reverse industry. Those avenues weren't really available for us in the forward industry. And so, again, we think that the outsized opportunity for growth is in the industry that we're focused on today. Yeah, so you're a little bit different from some other reverse lenders in that you you have proprietary products as opposed to the to the standard products in reverse. You know, why why did you decide to to take that route where you where you probably offer both, but you have these proprietary products that you offer as well? Yeah, it's interesting. When our current uh, chairman of our board first bought our company back in 2013. One of the things that he said to us is he really wanted to enable and empower our team to bring proprietary back uh, products back to market because they we had some in the market pre 2008. Obviously, 2008 changed everything, and the industry was really just living off of the Heckam product at the time. You know, when you're running a business being beholden to one product that's a government product that we didn't have any control over right every year there would be different changes made some of those changes would come out of left field some of them really put the industry in difficult spots and we really wanted to add something to our product suite that gave us a little bit more control of our own business so that you know we could be kind of the masters of our own destiny instead of being kind of order takers to the things that were going on around us we're very grateful for the Heckam program. It's you know foundational for the industry success, and there's been so much amazing work done um, in collaboration with Ginny May and FHA over the past few years, especially. Um, but we just we really think to have a thriving company, we need more than just one product in our suite. And so you know we're really excited that we do have the capability to have such a robust uh, capital markets team, the ability to do these unique securitizations and really fill the gaps for borrowers that the Heckam product doesn't necessarily fit. I really like that. So you were promoted to president of the overall Finance of America business last April. What excites you about this expanded role and how do you see your position evolving in 2024 and what are you excited to work on in 2024? Yeah, I mean, 2023 was a rough year. I'm, I'm happy that it's in the rearview mirror. Um, I think that uh, sentiment is probably echoed by a lot of people. Um, you know, I think what I'm most excited about is the opportunity that we have with the so many different talented people that have come together now focused on one singular mission, you know, between the AAG team, the FAR team, and then you know, this really highly talented group of people in our corporate team that were built to support a much larger enterprise doing kind of very big and strategic projects. All of those people are now focused on this singular mission and vision of, you know, helping people live better in their retirement years. And so I, I get most excited about what this group can do together, but we have, a you know, the rebuilding to do after all of these different and unique cultures came together, now we've got to create, you know, what the new culture looks like. And that's kind of my biggest passion is around culture. So I'm very excited about, you know, getting to tackle that and work with the team to build a company that everybody's proud to work for. Um, And then, you know, what are we, what are we focused on for 2024? Again, 2023, we were focused on such a massive transformation, right? A huge pivot, the merging of all these different people and different cultures and different companies. And 2024, I think we're most excited to go back on offense and do the things that we like to do, which really centers around innovation. And you know, whether that be really making sure the products that we have in market are the best they can be. Um, in addition to that, I think there's gonna be a really heavy look at what we can do differently from a technology and customer experience standpoint, uh, which I think our industry has lagged behind the you know forward mortgage industry in general um, and definitely in financial services in general. So we really have a lot of great things that we can do to kind of push us forward and help us meet customers where they are from a technology product and customer experience standpoint. So you're a featured speaker at the gathering, which I'm really excited about. And actually, uh, our audience is really excited about. So I don't know if you know this, but you know we keep track of uh, you know all the marketing emails that we do related to the gathering. 
And when your image is in one of those emails, and, you know, and your name and your and your title and your company, you know, people are people are clicking on your your, your speaker image, and they, I think they really want to know what what you're all about and what and what you and what your company is going to be doing in 2024. Um, so that that's really exciting. What are you What are you planning to talk about on stage? Uh, and I know it's a couple months from now, so it's like an eternity. But I know. what are you thinking about for that for that for that presentation? Well, now I feel like I have a lot more pressure to make sure it's good. Um, uh, you know, I haven't. It's just it's an interesting time, right? We've got such um, a unique opportunity when you look at the thirteen trillion dollars of home equity held by the you know fifty five sixty plus demographic. You've got, uh, I think the numbers are something like a $4 trillion retirement savings gap. And you have, you know, a ton of data that says people want to age in place. And so, you know, I think there's just this really big opportunity for us. I think as an industry, we've always been very niche and kind of like almost made things are hard in reverses. They're different, right? But I think we maybe made them harder or more different than they need to be. And so we really want to ask ourselves as a company, how can we continue to kind of break down the barriers, you know, continue to invest in education and show people that it really isn't that different so that, you know, the broader folks that are out there talking to the like larger numbers of customers always think of home equity as an option, as a uh, part of the product suite that they can offer, right? Whether it be realtors, you know, they, we have a lot of borrowers who will use reverse mortgages or home equity to help put a down payment on a house for their children or their grandchildren, right? Because the housing affordability issue is real. Getting into the real estate market is hard. And this, the data shows the sooner you can get into the real estate market, the better off you're going to be financially through the course of your life. So with people living as long as they are, how can we help shift that wealth over a little bit earlier? Those are the types of questions that you know we're always kind of wrestling with and asking ourselves and trying to figure out how we kind of take the things that we focus on daily and really make them part of the broader conversation happening in the bigger market. It's also the full customer life cycle of mortgage yeah. lending. And I, yes. I think breaking down some of those barriers is a really good thing and something that we're aligned on for sure. Well, Kristen, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been a real pleasure having this conversation. Yeah, thanks for having me, Diego. Thank you so much.